I always have fun checking out a new bike from a brand I've never ridden before. In this case, Polygon, which is a brand I hear about mostly from viewers overseas. Recently, BikesOnline.com asked if I wanted to spend a few weeks checking out one of their new to the US 2020 Polygon Siskiyou D7s. Now let me state I purposely didn't look at the specs in any real detail because I wanted to be surprised. Because this Polygon, it's priced in that full suspension void. Also let me mention that this is not a paid review, I'm not sponsored, and neither Polygon nor Bikes Online know what I'm about to say. And now back to that void. If you've shopped for a full suspension mountain bike recently, you've no doubt noticed that at your local bike shop, bikes tend to start at around $2,000 or more. There's just not much in the sub $1,300 price point. And the bikes that are available, they usually have lots of generic components or they weigh a ton. The D7 avoids both of those pitfalls. Let me show you what I mean. On the D7, just about everything is branded. Even the spacers on the BSA headset have Polygon branding. And there are lots and lots of entity branded components, like this 45mm stem. The handlebars are Entity 2, Entity Expert model, and for wide bar lovers, these are 780mm. While way outside of my preference, wide is popular these days. The lock on grips, Entity as well, and they're kind of a soft rubber. Shimano M201 Hydraulics, I've used these or a close variant of these many times, budget friendly and a rock solid choice. Rotors are an easy area to hide a shortcut, but these are Shimano as well. This bike has 180mm up front, 160 in the rear. You can also see this is a boost frame. Another very familiar to me setup at the shifter, a Shimano SLX. The frame's head tube is tapered for a RockShox Recon RL fork. 15 by 100 millimeter through axle, 120 millimeters of travel, and this recon is an air fork. It also has a manual lockout. Now this entity wheel set, the specs say the rims are tubeless ready. The tires, however, they're Trail Boss 27.5 by 2.25 WTBs. I'm not so sure these are tubeless approved. At the drivetrain, we'll kick off with a few generic or not well-known branded components, like these pedals. These alloy crank arms vary in length depending on the frame of the bike. This medium frame is 170 millimeters, but if you get a larger and extra large, it's 175. The generic chain ring is a 32 tooth. I usually go with 30, but they chose the safe middle ground. Looking at the derailleur, another solid choice, a Shimano XT. And that XT shouldn't have any problem working through the 11 speeds of the Sunrace cassette, 11 to 46 tooth. Being a full suspension bike, one of the biggest questions is always the rear shock and the pivot system. This bike uses an X-Fusion shock, and this model number, this is a mouthful. 02 Pro RLE2, which sounds like it should be a droid in Star Wars. And this X-Fusion is an air shock with simple controls, 190 by 45 millimeters. Now the specs say this bike's rear travel is 120 millimeters, and the local bike shop manager went into an explanation about how shock travel in the frame is factored in, but it started to sound like math, so I zoned out. I figure the proof will be in the ride. That said, the pivot system on this frame looks robust, and anytime I've seen torque specs printed on pivot points, it's been a good sign. The rest of the frame looks well made too, no marking spec-wise aside from wheel size and what Polygon calls their ALX alloy branding. And that ALX alloy helps this bike be decently light, especially for the price. It weighs 30 pounds and 2 ounces, and that's on the local bike shop scales. Graphics-wise, there's Polygon branding on the seat stays and on the underside of the down tube, and the rest of the bike is a two-tone color scheme, black and beige, which is not a color I see often on bikes. The only real flash graphics wise is the red lettering for the bike's model name. It's reflective and has almost a lipstick look. When I look at this color scheme and the angular and raised head tube badge, I think of an 80s Chevy pickup for some reason. But surprisingly, I guess the beige is a good choice, because considering how many things on this bike have individual branding, it doesn't look overly done. Even the saddle, with its embossing and contrasting textures, it doesn't stand out. But the big question is, will all these specs come together to make for a good bike on the trail? Because I did have questions, namely the geometry and also that X-Fusion shock. How's that going to work out? Pleasantly, acceptably well. And some of this footage may look very smooth, and that's the shock doing its job, it working in concert with that RockShox Recon. It doesn't show up well on camera, but I'm actually riding over some washed out ruts because we've had such heavy rain recently. Yet the ride's nice and smooth. And smooth means control, but it's also quiet. I didn't hear a peep out of anything at any point on this bike. I would say it's quiet well above its price point. 
and some things I expected. I'm well versed in the SLX XT setup, so I knew gear transitions would be quick and smooth. And with a 32 tooth chainring up front and an 11 to 42 tooth cassette in the rear, I knew that it would be easy to get up to cruising speed and to maintain it. Now let me throw one note in here. I'm not a jumper, so I can't say for certain that that X-Fusion shock is going to maintain the quiet or the smoothness of going off drops or taking large jumps. But I have taken a few hops on it without any noticeable bottoming out clunks. Well, two notes, because there wasn't an air pressure guide that was included with the instructions, so I had to guess and learn as I went, but eventually I was able to find a sweet spot. Now I've already talked about the bars being 780 millimeters wide and that that's not within my preferred range, so I would cut these down. And I'm not alone, a lot of other local riders have been slowly trimming back their bars, but understand Polygon needs to sell bikes and 780 is popular. Now I'm mentioning this because I don't really have shots that relay this well, but there are two things I don't like about the ride of this bike. One being the wide bars, it takes away from the bike's nimbleness, as does the bike's geometry. Well, I'm hesitant to say geometry, let me just say design-wise, because spec-wise it kind of is on par with some other bikes, but it's just not nimble. It's not something that can be thrown around into turns, it has to be steered into turns. Which, to be fair, I have to do on a lot of the bikes that I ride, but the more money a bike costs, the more picky I become. And don't get me wrong, because this is still a great ride for the money, it's just... well, let me show you. In 2020, most manufacturers are trying to squish that rear tire in as close as they can, and this bike has a bizarrely long gap. As one local rider put it, it looks like it was made for 29er wheels and they put 27.5s on. Now I know that's not the case because looking at the geometry specs, it's not out of line with other bikes, so I don't know why this is. The only thing I know is that it is, but I suspect this has to do with that somewhat less than cross country feel than I was expecting, though I may have been skewed partially by the frame's name, ALX Alloy Cross Country. But this could also be the reason the ride is so smooth. I mean, this is super plush, well above what I was expecting at this price, so factors. Also, when I look at these entity components, they look a lot like the Raleigh factory components, which I'm a fan of, so I'll give approval there. I also like their selection of Shimano parts, especially the SLX XT setup, pairing that with that decently ranged 11-speed cassette, a nice choice. And so far, everything about the frame gives the impression of sufficient strength and also it's sufficiently lightweight. So a full suspension bike, an X-Fusion Air Shock, a RockShox Air Fork, WTB tires, and a questionably half tubeless ready wheel set, there's not much lacking. Now I know there will be comments about this not having a dropper, but for the current $1,200 price, this model, there are provisions to bring your own dropper. Now not long after they sent me this bike, they said they had a new special dropper post edition that's $100 more. Looking for things to be critical about, I guess maybe I would ask why the excessive space here at the rear. I'll also nitpick the X-Fusion Shock's rebound adjustment dial. It only clicks in one direction and free spins in the other, so if you're like me and use clicks to index where you are versus where you were on adjustments, it makes it a little harder to get dialed in. But that's nitpicks, because all in all, I'm very impressed with what a Polygon bike is like and also what they can offer at the selling price that they're offering it at. And now it's time for you to share your thoughts. Do you like Polygon bikes or had you even heard of them before? And what about the features versus price? I'm impressed, are you? So comment below. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And have a great day.